Okay, so hello. Today I want to make some ambient dub techno on the Syntax. Now I'm pretty new with this genre, I'm still learning it and exploring it, uh, so this is really just me uh, sharing what I've learned so far, the absolute foundational fundamentals of how to get started on one of these tracks. So the idea here is that we are just going to uh, kind of lay down the basic foundation and then it leaves a lot of room for improvisation or adding more elements afterwards. So there's two elements that I think are the foundation of an ambient dub techno track. First, uh, for the techno part, uh, that's the techno kick. So techno kick is pretty basic, four on the floor, uh, but we're going to spice it up a little bit more than that. And then the second part is the dub part. That is basically chord stabs into reverb and delay. Uh, both of those things we can do very easily here on the Syntact. So let's uh, let's start with the the chords, actually. So I'm just going to use the chord machine on 6 here. That's its default location. You can load it on any of these tracks. So um, <clears throat> now that we're in here, so what I like to do with the chord machine, I think that this initial sound you get is a little bit cheesy. And if all you do is that, um, you're going to end up with something that's to me, it sounds a little bit cheesy. So I think um, my favorite way to work is I start by treating it as either a mono or unison voice, uh, which so down at the one end of the scale here, you have unison. Um, at the far end, you can also work in fifths if you want. Um, let's just do a unison two. Okay. Um, and now we can go through and pick a wave that sounds good. Oh, shoot. Nope, nope, nope. Get off that cat. I just got a kitten, which is going to distract us constantly. Let's turn on keyboard mode here. Um, might as well go ahead and pick my scale. So I think let's work in... Let's try maybe F minor. Huh, maybe. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, I don't need you running. So... Let's go ahead and do a little bit of sound design here. Of course, you can also just browse the presets and pick a chord preset. Um, but I think uh, we'll just make something from scratch here. Now remember, this is going to be more of a stab or kind of plucky chord. So, I also want it to have more attack, long release, okay, and now let's add the delay and reverb here. So before I even add it, I want to go into my delay and change some of the settings. So I want it ping pong, I want it pretty wide, feedback up a bit, and the time, I definitely want it to be uh, locked to uh, the, the BPM. So if you hold function and turn the delay time, you're going to get all these locked values. The dotteds are triplets, which we don't want here. Uh, probably an eighth is what I want. So let's just go with an eighth. So let's see how that sounds. Go back in here, send this into the, re or the delay. Okay. I'm actually going to turn off the ping pong for this. sounds better. And now let's do a little treatment on the reverb, turn the pre-delay way up, decay way up, just kind of mess with it a bit. And let's head back in. And oh, hello kitten. Okay. Let's uh, let's go with that for now, and we might make this a little more complex, but I think it's okay for now. One thing I might try is, um, so on the decay here, it might be nice if some of them were a bit long. Uh, I could just P-lock that later though, so yeah, I think I'll just do that. Um, and let's maybe try a few more waves, see if something else jumps out. Ooh, I like that. Let's try that. Okay, 
And now uh, we can pick what chords we want. Um, I think let's try... Where is it? There it is. Minor seventh. Good old minor seventh chords. So we've got um, a bit of a chord sound going. Good for now. Uh, so let's switch over to the kick sound. So I'm going to go into, uh, actually I think I'm going to do the analog kick on this. And let's see, I think this silky one is good. And okay, kick. This should be on the same, yep, yeah, it is. So one thing that's nice for the kick is to use a high pass filter. You can get a little bit of a resonance bump where you want it, but also it leaves the most bass frequencies available to add a sub bass later. Add a little envelope to that maybe. We definitely do not want this to go into the delay or reverb, so it's probably good. So let's just do this. So first we're going to put down just the standard four in the floor, which is kind of where you start. Not that note though. It should be uh, it should be an F. We're on. Okay, so this four on the floor kick gets super boring. And so in order to spice it up, we're gonna add some rumble kick, which very simply means you copy your sound and you start placing it in a couple of these in-between trigs, like I'll put one here, um, but you turn the velocity way down, like almost to the bottom. So try 16 here. And let's just hear how that one sounds. So you hear that? It makes just just makes it a little bit more interesting, basically. And then now that I've got my kind of rumble kick here, I can just go place it a couple other random places around. And these can be different velocities; they don't have to be the same. So that's already just a much more interesting drum pattern to me. Um, you know, we're still working with that same kind of four in the four kick, but we've got a lot more interest to it, I think. It almost sounds like a delay right here, uh, which is kind of cool, actually. I'll leave that. Okay, I think that's good for now. So now let's go back to our chords and add some in. Let's see, I've got my... not going to work. I'm still on 16 steps here. Uh, you definitely need to make that long, 64 steps, and I might even go half scale. Let's try it with this first, and we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, and actually, before I do that, 
forgot what I want, is different pattern length per, uh, per track. That's more useful, so let's crank this one up to 64, change our master length up to 64. If you hold function here, these also jump to units 64, which is really nice. Change link off, that's fine. Okay, so that way my kick can still be 16, that was this one, and then my chords can be longer. So let's try that. Oops. Liking the scale is what it is. Let's change the scale. Sounding better. Okay, change that final one, but otherwise I'm liking it better. Let's see if it lines up. No, it doesn't. Okay. So <laughs> I frequently do this where I, I don't start on the one. And thankfully, there's an easy way to fix that here, um, which is to go back to like figure out where your first actual trig is. Let's figure that out. Okay, that. So my first one's on page three. So I need to shift this over. So let's do that. You hold function and then do uh, the side left and right buttons and you can shift them side to side. So I need to go back. See, I'm moving the whole sequence back. Okay, now I'm on page two. Keep it going. Page one. Ah, oh, buddy. Get off, get off, quit biting me. Let's go right there. Okay.
So that's our Fortin Foundation, just a kick track and a chord track. Um, now let's do a little bit more. So on the chords here, um, it's always fun to set. So I'm at one extreme value, 127. See how it sounds if I play with this a little bit while it's going. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So I could set an LFO to that to kind of randomly change it a little bit, or I could just P-lock some of those different chord or wave shapes. Let's try that. So it looks like 120 is a good one. So I just did a little, little change there. And um, let's now go back to the kick. So I have that here. And now this one, the, what's nice about working with only one page or 16 steps is that I can just copy the whole track, uh, go over here to my digital kick, uh, kick number one, and then paste the whole track. And now I've got a doubled up kick. Let's do some sound design on this one. With that. So now basically I've got two different kicks layered up and I can bring them both in and out. But they're playing the identical pattern. Okay. This one does seem a little high pitched to me, so let's. It's also fun 
<clears throat> since we have two different kicks now, is we could have the digital one only work on the rumble kicks. Let's try that. So that's it. That's really the foundation of our track. Just the, the kick pattern, which I did is uh, two different layered kick sounds and the chords, which is from the chord machine. Um, everything else from here on out is kind of up to you what you want to do with it. Um, so I'll go ahead and add some more stuff and fill in more tracks and we'll see where we end up.
Thank you.